Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Orr from Live Well Chiropractic, uh, where our goal and game plan is always to help people restore their level of health back to where it should be so they can experience the great and abundant life that they deserve. Our goal here is always to talk about stress, its relationship to your health and how to minimize stress, reduce the effects of stress in your health, those anchors, those heavy bags that are holding our body back from being elevated to where we need to be and really living again in a wonderful, abundant life that we all really should deserve. Um, so today I want to talk to you and share with you a topic and we really go deep dive into stress, its effects on your health and well-being and how we can give you and arm you with the information to really make positive changes to make stress not your enemy, but a powerful thing for progression and actually make you healthier and stronger. So in my perspective, I feel we all have been born superheroes. We've all kind of had the ability to become really strong. Um, but we want to lost that over time. And I want to talk about what's caused us to lose it and actually how we can regain and becoming the superheroes of stress. So when we were all born, we were all born perfect. We have the ability to really handle and adapt to stress. Um, it's not until later in life that stress has really caused a corrosive effect in our health that really starts to break down a lot of things and causing a lot of health issues. So again, we're all born superheroes, we'll become weak. What has been that weakness? What's the kryptonite of our health is stress and its accumulative effects. So before we begin the really the in-depth thing, I wanna kind of do this quick assessment. If you were to right now at this moment, grade from as a score of zero to 10, your level of stress, what would it be? Zero being, oh, it's water out of a duck's back. I don't really have a lot of stress. I don't really feel the effects of stress. It's kind of pretty normal. Or is it 10, which is one more piece of stress is going to just cause me to explode, to lose it. So where would you grade yourself? And I'll be honest with you, if you're probably five or less, you're probably lying to yourself, right? You know, we all live in stressful worlds. We all live in the uh, chaos that's going on. We all have issues that are actually happening in our life. So, you know, if it's either one, you're ignoring it, head in the sand, ostrich, or you actually are feeling that living it. Um, and we got to find ways to actually help your body do it better. So here's my, the effect of stress in your health. One of my favorite authors is Bruce Lipton, world-renowned cell biologist. And he says, cancer, primary cause of cancer is stress-related. Same thing with heart disease. Um, all these other health effects really are showing up because of stress. This also is another research article that showed the six leading causes of death are all stress-related. Heart disease, cancer, lung ailments, accidents, cirrhosis of the liver, and suicide all have stress as the key area. 75% of all physician offices are stress-related, meaning as you might show up with a health problem like high blood pressure, but we know it's stress is the underlying cause. You might show up with a sore back, you know, but it's the stress and the muscle tension that's actually driving some of that. Digestive issues are all kind of stress-related. So the truth about it is how important is this to deal with your stress? It is the most important thing. If you can eliminate the six top causes of death, how much longer you live, how much more abundant life, how much more vitality you're going to have. And the answer is infinite. So here's one of my favorite slides when I'm talking about stress is this slide here. It talks about what happens, how your body changes and adapts to stress. The things on the left-hand side are increased when you're under stress. The things on the right side of your body shuts down or restricts when you're under stress. So things that go up are like blood pressure, heart rate, muscle tongue gets tighter, blood sugar goes up, clotting factor, stomach acidity goes way up, fear and anxiety, and subluxations. If you're part of office, you understand what subluxations are. That's the effect. That is the stain that's left over after stress stress has come and gone. The effect is still left on your body that your body still has to deal with and adapt to. But if you look at all this list and stuff, how many people are heart issues, muscle tone issues, you know, fibromyalgia, you know, any type of skeletal issues, blood sugar again is rampant, the now clotting factors, stomach acidity, like I said, digestive issues are rampant. Let's look at the right hand side is, is other things that go down, immune response, how important is that with the situations going on in our world? Insulin sensitivity, digestion, bone density, short-term memory, reproduction, deep sleep, and even health. Overall health really decreases. So a couple of things, just like the reproduction one stuff is I just read a recent article by 2050, just around the corner and stuff, over half the 20 year olds will be infertile will not be able to reproduce. That's crazy stuff. Why? Because of the uh, extra stress that's going on. Short-term memory. How many people are affected with memory issues now? 
tons and a lot of it has to do with stress. And then we just know just general health and then sleep. That's why we included sleep along with the stress thing we're going to actually discuss. So again, this is the power. This is why we need to have stress as a conversation. But the thing is no doctors know how to deal with stress. It's only about giving you a drug and antidepressant to help you maybe not feel your stress and move on. And the answer is that's not the solution. We have to come up with a real honest solution of how we can actually get you healthy and well and actually use stress to be a advantage to you. Now, there are three types of stresses. There are physical stresses, how you sit sitting way too much, how you stand on concrete, hunched over cell phones all the time. You know, all those things are physically stressful to our body. We also know chemical stress, things that are around us in our environment, from our water, from our air, chemicals that are polluting everything is really bad. And then it's like this guy's cheeseburger, right? It's what we put in our body and our foods and stuff and makes us, again, very stressed out. The other thing that also stresses your body out when you're not getting enough of the right nutrients, if you're not getting enough clean water, fresh air, you know, if you're not actually eating the vitamins and minerals your body needs, that also stresses your body out. And then obviously, last but not least, is mental emotional stress, worrying and concerned about whether it be politics, whether it be the economy, whether it be family issues, finances issues, we all have that stress, and it all just kind of builds up. And causes this thing in the middle triangle, which is the subluxations. When the stresses are gone, that's the effect that they have on your body. And it affects your body's healing ability and affects your body's future adaptation to stress. That's where the problem comes in and stuff. The more stress weakens you, makes you more susceptible to more stress, which weakens you even more, which causes more health issues, which causes you weaker and more stress and causes more of a breakdown. That's how we end up in the vicious cycle. And we got to talk about changing that. The other concept that most people miss about stress is cumulative, so meaning it builds up over time. So we need to have ways to actually uh, dissipate past stress so your body can actually heal and get better. But there is better ways. And that's what I want to quickly pivot and actually talk to you about how do we get you better. So we're going to kind of go through a kind of a step process. The first thing with stress all comes down to mindset. We got to change the mindset around it. We got to stop limited thinking, worrying, and holding grudges. Those are just Things are not positive for anything. We need to start. What purpose? We need to have a purpose and a reason to get out of bed. We got to have alignment of our vision and our values. We can also have a uh, gratitude. Give thanks and stuff for what it is that we actually have. Why are those all important? Because this was a brand new study that just came out actually about two or three years ago that showed that your reaction to stress is the most key important thing. Sometimes we can't change the stress we're in. Right? I can't change the weather. I can't change sometimes family reaction. I can't change what the president says, but I can change how I react to it. Those are the things I can control. So this was a study that showed people that are high levels of stress, had high stressful jobs, had a 43% increase in risk of dying, but that only held true if they thought the stress was bad for them. If they thought the stress was not harmful for them, they actually had no effect. They actually lived longer because it was all about their mindset. What's neat is one of the uh, hormones that's produced when you're actually under stress is oxy, uh, or, uh, oxytocin. What this does is actually a feel-good hormone when you're under stress. Your body already puts stuff in to help you adapt to stress. It makes you want to cuddle once it makes you hold people closer. So those are really important things for survival strategy for stress. Mm -hmm. And then here was another one, too, that asked, again, people who were under really stressful situations. This actually caused them to be in something they were actually scared or gave someone gave them false bad news and how their body reacted to it. And again, major stressful events increased the risk of dying by 30 percent. But they showed people who are actually caring for others, actually had purpose, had a reason. Actually, they had no increase in the effect of stress. So, again, it's all about a mental game. It's like how you react to stress. Because stress is, is personal, it's perspective. Each person has their own reaction to that. Now, as I use this picture here, someone jumping out of a perfectly great airplane, right? Why would someone do that? This could be the most stressful thing in the world for them, or it could be the most invigorating, exciting thing. It's all about perspective, how you choose to see the good in things or the bad in things that will make a big, big difference in how stress affects your body. So this is also another little concept that's actually a Japanese um, term called kinatsura. Um, and it's actually a repair of gold where they actually take perfectly good pottery, they break it, and then they put it all back together with these gold little insets and stuff to piece it back together. And the finished product after it's broken and put back together is worth 10 times more than what the original piece was. And the purpose of this and why it is in the stress class is that we all are not perfect. I'm trying to let you off the hook. I'm trying to say is you don't have to live the perfect 
life and stuff to have no stress. Stress is part of it. You're going to have breaks. You're going to have falls and stuff of your ego, of your health and stuff that's going to knock you to your knees and stuff. But it's how you put that back together is how you move on. Is that stress going to keep you crumbled in pieces? Or are you going to piece it back together with gold? Are you going to make you even stronger in the future so you can be worth more and more valuable moving forward? And that's how we're going to make your body healthier, stronger to absorb and react to stress better. Put that S on your chest. But we know is, is you either learn to control your mind or you'll be controlled by your mind, right? So that's why it's important to actually talk about mental things to keep your body healthy or keep your insanity through it. Thoughts causes feelings, right? How you think and perceive causes feelings. Those feelings then develop into actions inside your body. The feelings then drive those arrows. Remember we said either up or down, causing all those internal reactions. If you stop the feelings, right? This isn't a negative thing. All of a sudden those arrows don't get pointed in that direction. It doesn't make that physiological change and it actually helps your body um, not to react to their stress. So think positively about things is gonna be the biggest thing. Um, and again, what we tell ourselves is negative thoughts of making a huge impact because thoughts do turn into reality. What you think can either happen positively or what you think can also happen negatively. It's your choice. So I'm also going to teach you another little way talking about thoughts. This is called EFT. It's actually called tapping. What you can do is you can go into Google. I'm going to do a very brief explanation. This just doesn't do it justice, but I want to bring an awareness and introduction to it. Um, what you have to do is Google EFT, emotional freedom technique or tapping. Those are all synonymous terms. Um, there's tons of videos out there to kind of actually learn to teach you to do this on your own. This is a way for you to kind of clean up some past stresses, also help your body adapt to future stresses or uh, current stresses you're going through and uh, work it. And it's actually the coolest thing ever. So first thing what you want to do when you're uh, doing this and stuff, we have a stressful situation is identify the problem you want to focus on, be as specific as possible. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm very anxious about giving this presentation to um, people and I don't know how they're going to perceive it. They might not like it. Um, so I'm very anxious that this is going to come off in the right way. So that could be a perceived stress that I'm under right now. I can feel my heartbeat increasing because I, again, I'm having that worry and concern. So what do you want to do is then rate it on a zero to 10, how stressful am I am about giving this presentation, how stressful I am about this financial situation, how stressed that I am from past situations about maybe abusive relationship. Maybe it's been something um, you wish you had done or wish you had said or something. You know, you got to rate that stress, identify it, and then rate it on a zero to 10. And then what you're going to do is you're going to actually compose a setup statement that's going to come up in a positive uh, way. And the statement is this, even though I have this anxiety about giving this presentation, I deeply and completely accept myself. I accept my brokenness. I accept not being perfect. I accept what happened in the past. I accept the mistakes that I've made. I don't want to hold them and carry them into the future. So I want to release myself from the effects that this stress has on my body. So even though I have this anxiety, even though I have this stress, even though I have this hurt and pain from the past, I want to release it. Or if it's in the future, I want to release the anxiety I have. And then, so these are just some examples. You can kind of uh, pause this and write them down. But again, even though I'm feeling anxiety about my financial situation, I'm deeply and completely accept myself. That's the important part. Deeply and completely accept myself. So then what you're going to do is you're going to do the karate chop. So what you're going to do is you're going to do this little point right here on the bottom of your hand. You're just going to tap it three times while you're saying, even though I had this anxiety, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I've had this anxiety, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I have anxiety, I deeply and completely accept myself. And you're going to uh, then go to the next point, which is these um, acupuncture points. So it's going to be top of the head, right here in the middle part of your uh, forehead. You're going to do the corner of the eye. You're going to do underneath the eye. You're going to do right below the nose and above the lip. You're going to do right here in the chin. You're going to do right here in the collarbone. That's the bone right in through here. You're going to actually tap right where it actually taps into the middle part of your chest. And then the last is going to be underneath your arm. You're going to actually tap those. So you're going to do and repeat the mantra all five times as you go through this and stuff. Even though I have this anxiety, I completely, uh, completely accept myself. Even though I have this anxiety, I deeply and completely accept myself. And then once you get down here, once you get through part of it, you can just say this anxiety, this anxiety, as you go through and type some of the stuff. And you're going to feel a release. The, the pressure points and the... Um, Reflex points are going to be very powerful, but it's the statement and you're going to completely 
rewire your brain to think of it in a positive way. And then when you go through it, these are all the points. So if you didn't get the previous screen, you can actually pause this and write these all down. Um, you're going to then rate where you feel with this and stuff. So um, if you're on a zero to 10, it started out eight and now it's down to three, then basically you can move on. You might come back later on if it, when that issue reappears or you have some anxiety or if you have some pain from that past issue, you can also go through and do it that way um, and uh, kind of clear it out. Um, but if it's still high, you can still come back and you can do it a second or third time. Usually three is enough times to really clear it out. And again, even high levels of tens, I've seen them got down to threes and fours just by doing it three times. So even though I still have some of this anxiety, I deeply and completely uh, and I love myself, uh, accept myself, this remaining stress, anxiety, a lot of tapping. So it's just going to be a very powerful thing. I love tapping. So do some more research into it. And I think you would definitely be well served to take a couple minutes to go through and tap out some past stresses. I can't uh, express how much I've seen emotional issues being the chronic kind of um, the, the issue that's really holding people back from actually healing. Some other things kind of jumping into the next thing is that we're going to talk about diet. Can diet play the major role in our stresses? Either it can cause a lot of stress or it can alleviate a lot of stress depending on what we put on our body so the do things and stuff makes sense we want to eat non-starchy vegetables some fruit not a lot meat poultry fish any type of protein we need to get more protein in our diet eggs are great natural fats are important some nuts and seeds and actually we want to drink tons of water things we don't want to do is refine carbohydrates cereals and grains sweeteners bad vegetable oils and i kind of list on here that's everything other than olive oil avocado palm and coconut oils um, diet, dairy products and stuff, you want to eliminate most of those, soda, soda juices and alcohol, which goes without saying, and actually any type of sugar um, will actually uh, impair your immune system, so we want to actually eliminate those. This is just a couple of little uh, graphic about the brain, which kind of goes into uh, certain things. There's meditation, there's music, um, talking about thoughts. We just discussed about that, how to change thoughts, but thoughts are real. But really want to point up here is, is actually almost two thirds of your brain is fat. A lot of people are living in this low fat diet and having major brain issues, major anxiety and depression because of not getting healthy fats. So we need to re replenish your brain with healthy fats. It needs to be part of your diet on a regular basis. No, it won't cause heart disease. I eat tons of fat and my cholesterol levels are extremely low. So don't uh, make that false assumption. The other thing you also need to do is exercise people, please. This is not a a nice thing to do. It's not a thing to do just every now and then. This is a necessity, right? We live in a world we don't move as much. We're not chasing in our food. We're not growing everything in our garden all the time like we used to. So we sit at a chair. We sit at a computer all the time. We sit in front of a phone. Those are not healthy things. We need to be changing the way we do things and we have to get movement. Our bodies were designed to, as I said, it's a required nutrient. It changes so many hormones in your body. It also helps out lymphatic system. So it's not about should I, it's about let's doing it. So Next thing I want to dive into is stress. Also, stress affects, affects health or stress affects your sleep and if sleep affects stress. So it's kind of the, uh, the, the dichotomy there. So here's just one thing that shows the, even if you just lose a couple hours of sleep just for one night, it causes all kinds of things. Hard to wake up, clumsy, you're not as productive, you're usually more distracted. Basically, it, should, it comes down to is you're 30% less effective when you lose just a couple hours of sleep, which is really important. We know that sleep has been linked to all of these health issues, short-term memory loss, weight gain, diabetes, which we covered. Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, GI problems and kidneys. Some of those are very similar to what we talked about with stress in general, but sleep specifically are linked to a lot of these things because your body doesn't have a chance to heal and repair and get better, which is really important. We know that when we talk about sleep, the one hormone that's really important is melatonin. Melatonin is actually produced in your brain when you are exposed to light and exercise. That's why light or exercise is important, but light is also really important. Um, and it's one of those things too, that also decreases, melatonin decreases production as you age. It's for some reason, as you get older, your body does not produce as much melatonin. So that's why you see a lot of the older elderly people actually struggle with sleep is because of the lack of melatonin in your body. 
But then also what other people do is stuff is they cause the melatonin in the body not to be um, produced because they're in this powerful cycle of drugging them body, right? They drug to go to sleep and then it's hard to wake up and then they get the coffee to wake up and the coffee uh, boosts them too much. And then all of a sudden they need something to um, get them to sleep again. So we get this cycle where in 2020, there was over $5 billion of money spent on sleep aids. Um, those were drugs to get people to sleep. And we know, again, more and more Starbucks and um, sheets is and all that other stuff are going up with more coffee. So we know I, that probably uh, industry and just uh, coffee alone is probably even double the drugs, right? So again, not the coffee is all bad, not a little bit is okay, but if you're relying every day to wake up with coffee, then it shows that there's a major problem that needs to be addressed. So things that we need to start doing is first of all, is, is getting out during daylight hours. You have to get in the sun. We've been designed and created to live under the sun, not live in houses and stuff all the time. If you can't get out in the sun, get full spectrum light bulbs. Um, that's something uh, that I am actually getting ready to do is order some light bulbs for my winter. Um, so I can't get outside as often. I'm actually going to be exposed to the same radiation of uh, that the sun produces, the same UV lights and stuff. So it can actually stimulate my body. Um, so I'm actually looking forward to that. Um, and then also making sure you exercise. That also stimulates the sleep production. We also want to talk about bedroom setup, which is really important. Um, we want to sleep in complete darkness, which is crazy. You think people is like, yeah, yeah, you want to be dark, right? You want to get rid of that nightlight. We want to shut off um, the uh, clock, uh, your alarm clocks and stuff, or at least turn them away from you so you're not seeing that bright light in your eyes. Um, we want to keep temperatures less than 70 degrees um, so your body can actually cool down so it can sleep. You want to keep it quiet and you want to consider separate bedrooms. Yes, for spouses and animals, right? So anything that will prevent you from sleeping, snoring, um, all those things and stuff will cause you to lose sleep. Um, but also, here's another big detriment to people's sleep is, is what? Well, before you go to bed, you sit and you're scrolling all the craziness that's going on in the world or what everyone else is doing. It gets you all roused up, all stressed up, and then it's hard to go to sleep. Or either that or you're watching the evening news, right? So we know, again, usually the news, they don't report anything good. It's all about the bad stuff's happening, which, again, gets your body and adrenaline going, which is then it's hard to sleep. Also, too, watching those uh, screens, whether it be your cell phone or computer screens, actually can produce blue light that actually keep you awake. Um, so uh, we want to make sure we stay away from that. Um, we also want to make sure we don't change our schedule. How many people do this is on the weekends, they stay up longer um, on the weekends, and then the days off they have work. So again, it creates this abnormal cycle for five days your body's used to start routine and then the other two days is off routine which then all of a sudden monday creeps in and you're kind of trying to catch up and it's usually wednesday thursday till you get back into the routine and then the weekend happens and it all gets reset again so that's where a lot of people have major issues and can be not a healthy thing so have the same routine just go to bed and get awake same time every day no matter what you're doing so a lot of people don't have a wind down time and stuff so again instead of watching cell phones you know, try to read, try to relax. Um, those are all things or journaling and stuff, writing down the positive things that happened during the day is one thing to reinforce that. So here's just a couple of things we said about taking a hot bath and shower, wear socks to bed, cold feet will prevent you from uh, sleeping. Um, again, listen to relaxation CDs, um, listen to something spiritual uplifting, journaling, all those things and stuff can be, again, positive things just to improve your sleep. So just one of these, two of these things, you're going to notice a big difference. Like I said, journaling is really important. The other thing I see that causes a lot of sleep issues is, is eating the wrong things, right? A lot of the foods here uh, that you uh, can eat or don't eat is going to enhance your sleep. Sugars, grains, pasteurized dairy, all this stuff is your body's going to react to, and your body's going to have to actually absorb that and digest it. Um, so first of all, it realizes it's not real food, so it's going to be pretty angry with you. And then it's also going to realize it has all this work to do right before it's ready to shut down and go to sleep. So that's not a good thing to eat before you go to bed at all, let alone uh, those wrong things. Um, also avoid drugs, avoid alcohol, which goes without saying, yes, it helps you fall asleep, but it also will keep you awake longer and stuff. So uh, in the middle of the night, you'll have to wake up. So that's where alcohol um, is the uh, detriment to your sleep. Lose a little extra weight because when you're sleeping, if you have the extra weight pushing up, you're not going to be able to breathe as well. That causes sleep apnea, which causes lots of health issues. Um, again, try not to drink any fluids right before going to bed. Eat protein, small pieces of fruit if you need to eat anything a little bit. Um, and the last thing is toxins. Toxins can be one of the things that cause you to wake up between two and three in the morning. If it's always you go to sleep, 
to wake up in the middle of the night and you can't go back to sleep. That's usually toxicity in your liver. That's when your liver is detoxifying itself. So that's why I really tell people they need to do some type of detoxification, whole body detoxification twice a year. I can't tell you people's had uh, sleep issues. They do a detox and all of a sudden they sleep better. Why? Amazingly, your body gets rid of the stuff that shouldn't be there and it functions the way it's designed. I also know too, is people need to be taking vitamin D. Um, vitamin D is extremely important stuff for your overall health. That's the sunshine vitamin. That's what actually will stimulate the melatonin production, get your body to actually feel like it's out in the sun. Um, people that have low production as a melatonin, I'm more of a um, person that is recommending more and more melatonin, getting better results and stuff. Um, first is melatonin is neither addictive nor habit forming, meaning if you take some, you don't have to keep taking more, or if you um, can never get off of it, your body will stop producing its own. None of that is true. Um, melatonin can be the best thing to actually help you sleep, but it's also one of the best antioxidants to keep you young, they found out a lot longer. The one I love here and one we carry in our office is a time release one and stuff. It actually um, is great. It gives you a burst of melatonin at the very beginning, but then it gives you small amounts of melatonin to kind of keep you asleep. So that could be a, a different way instead of just taking it all at once, the burst to get you to sleep um, keeps you asleep. We also have other products here that we use because sleep can be multifactorial. So again, I'm trying to be as brief as possible, give you the highlights, but there can be multiple factors that cause it. Um, valerian and stuff is more of a mental thing. So if it's mentally, you can't go to sleep. Um, that's actually a really nice one to help mentally shut your brain down. Cabo Forte is also another really just mellower. Um, if it's just you get really stressed out and anxiety and stuff and you really can't sleep because of uh, um, the hamster that's going on in the mind. Uh, Kava uh, is very good for that. Relax and calm is just muscle tension stuff. Same thing with Mintrain. It's just uh, magnesium. Magnesium is really good for sleep and sleep aid. And then Chase Tree is a little bit for hormones and stuff. So for people who have hot flashes, it's causing them to sleep. And again, Chase Tree would be something we would recommend. But again, um, contact us or talk to the doctors when you're in your next appointment. We'll try to get you set up with the right um supplement that would actually help aid in your sleep. Um, we also have other technology called PMF, which is the newest technology in our office and stuff. PMF has been used for a long time for actually help reset uh, um, your circadian uh, rhythms and stuff to get your body sleeping. I have uh, at least three or four people that come in and use PMF just specifically for sleep. I had one gentleman could not sleep. I think he was getting two to less than two hours of sleep for probably six months. I mean, I don't know how this gentleman uh, was going. You could see he just had bags underneath his eyes, redness around his eyes. And he just said, I just can't sleep. I tried everything, done everything. Um, and with the PMF and stuff, he said, now it's been probably six weeks, a full eight hours of sleep. He says he feels so much better. Um, so again, PMF can be a huge factor with it. So what is PMF? You can research that, or you can ask one of the doctors when you come in next time, but it's just pulsed electromagnetic fields that are uh, emanated from a pad that you lay on. Very calming, very relaxing. Um, it actually helps reset a lot of your circadian rhythms. So again, we were born superheroes, but we become weak through stress. So we need to start ways to build and strengthen your body. We talk things that cause the breakdown in your or the stress that cause the breakdown in your health. But how do we become more resilient to stress in the future? And that's where the chiropractic uh, comes in, the care that we do, because we know your body is designed to be healthy, it's normal, it's smart. And the nervous system is the master system that controls the health. It is the computer system, the CPU that runs your body, and runs your health. And when your body's under stress, that CPU gets stressed out, just like trying to open too many programs all at once. If you're not going to function, your uh, computer's going to slow down and your body's going to have lots of stress. So one of the facts of that nerve supply, as we kind of say, is the CPU, the brain, is communicating to the rest of your body through this wiring. As long as those wirings are connected, things work. Heart, digestive system, all of the, your body stress responses go the way that's designed. But just like the circuit breaker on the right hand side, if we stress out this wiring in your house, just like stressing out nerves in your body, it's going to shut down. All of a sudden, we're not going to give the right nerve supply to your heart. We're not going to be able to breathe as well. Our immune system is going to be depleted because we're not sending the right nerve signals to your body. That's the effect of these subluxations is the interferences or irritation interferences in your body's innate ability to heal and remain healthy. Those are the things that block your body. The, the stress is gone, but it's had an effect. It's kind of caused that subluxation. Just like you plug 20 things into a light socket, 
causes your breaker to blow, right? You unplug them and all of a sudden everything works again. No, the breaker is still blowing. You have to change the breaker and how it's working and reset that. And that's what the adjustments do is reset the nervous system so things flow. What's nice in our office, like I said, if you've been to our office, you've seen all this scanning technology. We can actually see the damage to the nervous system. We can see what effects the stress has had. I call them stains. You know, that's left on your nervous system since the stress is left that's causing your health problems or holding you back. So this is a way we can monitor and track your health. And we can also track your success as you get stronger, as you get healthier. And that's one of the side effects I hear people all the time say about their adjustments. You know what? I went through this stressful situation, whether it be they lost a loved one, you know, major crisis at work or something like that. And they're like, you know, I handled it pretty well. I didn't really have this breakdown um, like I normally did. And the reason why is because their circuitry was running better. We up their ampage, right? If you understand circuitry, there's like a 20 amp fuse. All of a sudden, when we close it in with a 40 amp fuse, you can put more stuff through that circuit without it breaking down. And that's what the adjustments absolutely do. So, but we have ways to track and look at that. Again, we know when stress in general is uh, very reactive to PMF, we talked about its benefits just for sleep, but also for in stress and its effect on your body, the PMF is shown to be very beneficial, the technology we use for all kinds of things over here. Look at all these things we already talked about. <clears throat> Bone growth is affected by stress, depression, anxiety, pain relief, increasing energy, sleep. We talked about joint repair, mobility, circulation, digestive problems, relaxation, anxiety. These are all stress issues, right? PMF is kind of really the um, your uh, um, ace in the hole when it comes to stress because we can't control it all. Um, that's why I love this technology. It seems like just about everything responds better to PMF and you heal better. The adjustments go better. So it's really a, a great technology that we utilize right here along with our adjustments. Um, again, one of the greatest things stuff is it actually increases your um, uh, stem cell production stuff, which is your baby cell. So it helps your body replenish and become healthier over time. Um, we also have some other adaptogenic herbs. We talked about some specific things that help your body with sleep, but then there's things just with general health. Ashkawanga is the herb for stress. I love it. It helps you become more mellow. It actually helps you balance out. Um, just your body doesn't react to stress as well. So it kind of gives you that buffer to handle stress, but gives you the capacity to do it better without reacting. Really on ginseng is uh, kind of not really a stressful thing, but I threw it here because I love it because it does two things. It gives you more focus and clarity. Plus also it gives you strength. And so it's the stamina, really old stamina. Ginseng gives you blood flow. To the brain and stuff so it actually gives you the tools that sharpens your skills it gives you more superpowers when you're actually dealing with stress this is an herb really on ginseng that i take on a regular basis i actually take ashawanga in the evening and stuff to help me de-stress after a long day and they work both brilliantly and i love them both and it really helps me sleep well it helps me deal with stress and adapt to stress at a high level so we also want to kind of uh, talk to you about is, is if you watch this video, you can actually call and you can actually come in. Um, and uh, if you uh, want to do a um, health and chiropractic stress evaluation, we can actually get that set up for you. Um, we can also, or again, if you mention this video, we'll give you 10% off of any of the adaptogens and sleep aids for your first time. And also too, if you really want to try out PMF, we actually are doing a special thing where it's actually just three PMF sessions for $99. Each session lasts about 40 minutes. So you're getting high value for your $99. You can actually start to experience the differences. Don't think and believe just three sessions are going to cure all your problems, but they'll at least help you feel and understand PMF and its effects on your health and actually how it can improve it. So I want to take time just to all, first of all, thank you for watching this video. Also, too, if you know someone that should be listening to this and stuff, pass this on to them. Now I want you to go back and review your notes. Hopefully you're taking some good notes, if not re-listen to it. So and actually come up with a game plan. What is it I'm going to actually start to do? How am I going to start to move better? I'm going to eat a little bit better. I'm actually going to get to bed on a regular basis. Come up with a game plan that's right for you. I'm going to do tapping and stuff at least uh, once a week and stuff to decrease a lot of stress that I have right before I go to bed. I'm going to watch videos and stuff to learn a little bit more about how to tap. I'm going to actually start taking some supplements that's going to help this. And I'm actually going to become more regular with my chiropractic care. So kind of take a litmus test of all the things I mentioned. Where are you doing really well at? Maybe you're already a good exerciser, but the diet's been lacking. That's the area we need to really increase and stuff and actually get you the most benefit for the, the um, your efforts. So if you have any questions about what it is that you really should do, come to the doctors. That's what we're here for. Ask on your next uh, consultation um, or even your next visit what it is that you should really do and have accountability. If you speak into us and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to start doing this. We want to hold you accountable to that so it actually makes you happen. So, all right. So if any of questions, 
again, feel free to reach out. Uh, our website uh, has our address on it, um, our email address on it, so you can actually reach out to me and connect with me in any way possible. Or if you want to reach out to the office, our phone number is 814-624-0606. All right, thanks everyone and have a de-stress day and enjoy stress and make your body healthier and stronger.